Many small businesses don't often think about the impact of macroeconomics in their own business. Kanti Bhai is a founder and also the chief economist at Nascent Advisory and Research. And he joins me now on the line to talk a little bit about what does the economy look like it's going to do and why the hell should you and I care? Kanti, are you well, sir? I'm very good, thank you. It's good to be to talk to you. Well, I, I'm going to start off by the very intro I've just done, which is very often I talk to small business owners and they listen to the language people like you guys speak and it just goes over their heads. You know, all the acronyms, all the percentages, and they go, why, why does it matter to me? Like, should I even care? So let's talk about what the economy is looking like right now. What are we seeing? And frankly, why should we care? Look, I think this is actually quite an interesting topic. And I always say this, especially when people talk about, uh, you know, uh, people saying, well, when an economy is bad, that's the time when people start, must start their own businesses. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, that's really, really actually a silly thing to say because actually in one economy, because all businesses work within the same economy or the economic environment. And I think this is the main thing that um, we've had, we have to come to internalize is that really um, what, when you talk about an economy, we're talking about a collection of, of agents, of people, of businesses actually waking up every day and doing something. Um, and that's why I'm always so opposed to this idea that we must first grow the economy and create jobs. We must first get people, people doing things. And then we feel with that, and the collection of people doing things we call an economy. And then when they do more things, we say the economy is growing. And I think this has been the really the sad part about the lockdown, right? Because it said to us, all of us sit down and do nothing. So basically yeah. we shut it down and we did nothing. And therefore no economic activity. So people were not doing anything. And so the economy came to a grind as it were. So I think the, the, uh, the big problem that we face now is how to actually then get people uh, back to work, um, doing things, working together, making sure that they're producing goods and services, that they're energetic. And, um, and where we are right now really is that sense of, I think there's been a lot, in, when I talk to people, it seems to me that there's been a lot of, a lot of, a lot of momentum, is it way. I think, Absolutely. you know, I mean, the lockdown, we had that terrible downgrade. We know that, uh, you know, the South African economy hasn't been doing well. Uh, you know, the Minister of Finance just told us also that we need to cut our spending. So there has been a lot of negative news that has been in the system. Uh, and I think a lot of small businesses, people were losing jobs. Remember, unemployment had been growing. So, and then we sort of got into the situation. And I think that momentum uh, is in such a place uh, that it's going to be very difficult to actually open it up and actually get us going again. When you talk about the economy being a measure of things that are happening in the economy, that's fine. Maybe that's what GDP means, right? So maybe I can see my role as a small business in those numbers. But what do the numbers then tell me, right? Because it's a little bit of a, of, you know, the function of what I do is the outcome of the numbers, but I don't really know what the numbers mean for me. So given where the economy is now, given what has happened with lockdown and given what's likely to happen for as long as COVID-19 is around, what should I care about? What does the information tell me? There's always one thing that, uh, uh, you know, depending where you are when people talk about GDP, the one thing is, of course, is it usually tells you an indication of where things are, of the mood of other people, and how other people are likely to want to respond. So investors will say, for example, I think we hear this all the time, oh, I would like to go and invest in the South African farming sector because it's growing. Because people like the idea of things that are growing, you know, they want to associate with growth, with things that are doing better, with progress. Uh, and I think in, a, in the sense that we are facing now, right, a lot of people are, t are feeling a little bit down because they are not seeing that movement, that action. They are thinking, you know, where am I going? But I think that's exactly the opportunity, I think, for, for, for small businesses and for opportunities that exist. Um, because if you're a small business or entrepreneur, your best, your, 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 um, your best opportunities come from when people are a bit, you know, in, in a gloomy mood, they need help. Um, and I think the success of very many small businesses has been that targeting an, uh, you know, a sense where there's a, an open window for people to say, you know what, you are struggling with this. I can fix that. You know, you, your yeah. roof is leaking. I can fix that. I think this is happening. I can fix that. And as I was saying to you, look, I've had the great opportunity because obviously as an economist and researcher, people are looking for those little lights uh, out yeah. there. And I think business people, small businesses should actually look for that. And I, um, I was actually this morning talking to a friend of mine who was telling me that, you know, she's looking now to, to re-engage her entire business because she's like, you know, people are asking different things of me now. Uh, and it's a story I like to tell because I've been following her quite closely. Um, she's in the manufacturing business and she's actually literally expanded her business and actually taken it even out of the factory. And I think that's an interesting thing because 
most of us would look at this a gloomy environment and yeah. you know say no opportunity as opposed to asking the questions what can i do and how can i actually look at my business right now what am i lacking what i would like to what could I actually be to other businesses? And I'm finding that a lot of people that I'm talking to, that seems to be the thing that I can say personally for me in my businesses has been the opportunity to look and say, what's actually in the environment? What's missing? What can I contribute now? Because I think the business I was doing um, before lockdown and certainly before this um, was slightly different because it was actually catering to a known environment and had actually known players. I find the opportunity has been now that um, you know, people are looking for new ideas, new thinking, and that seems to be a, a very, very good space. to. That's brilliant. That's a great testimony in your own business to share that point. But let's talk about the support structures. Government announced a lot of stuff. A lot of big businesses tr are trying a lot of stuff. There's now this 200 billion rand guarantee for Reserve Bank and the National Treasury, I think, hoping that banks can go and deliver this to entrepreneurs on the ground. When you look at it all, given your experience and your insights, should we be hoping that indeed the big brother of big business and big government is going to come and rescue us? Or perhaps we should just back ourselves and, and try to come up with the pivots that, that work in this environment? I think that the, under the current environment, I'm not very hopeful. Look, as I said, before we got into lockdown, we were, um, we were you know, in very difficult conditions. I can tell you, you know, uh, that you know, making payments was not as easy. I think a lot of people would have been in arrears. And so the, the current structure that has been set up, this 200 billion loan guarantee fund, starts by saying it is for businesses that have been in good standing or businesses that were doing well already. You know what I mean? They want to protect those businesses. And a lot of small businesses have been under a lot of pressure. So that has, um, I've, been, I've been very vocal about this. And I think a lot of small businesses should be to say, look, it's not helpful to us if you are telling us that this would have been a, this is going to support businesses that they, they are, the word is viable. So many small businesses tend to be not viable anyway, and that's our constant fight anyway, right? That, you know, you are, at any given time, you're probably not viable, but you're pushing, trying to get new money, cash flow working, and all of those things. But I do think where the opportunity is, uh, apart from the fact that we have to tell, you know, government supporters properly for the kind of businesses that we run, is to tell the, um, is to look into each other and say, how do we collaborate? And I find that that is going to be a big, big thing um, going forward, because I, I sense that there has been, as you think about a changing economy, and I think everybody now agrees, we are going into the so-called new world or a new economy. And I think as we go there, we need to find strengths amongst ourselves about how do we, can I do things better than I've been doing them? Or how do I enter this new opportunity? Who can I find? And for me, that has been really um, a great opportunity. I do think that a lot of people need to look into that. The state and all of us are thinking that we're going to recover. And I think that's gonna be a big mistake, that we look for a recovery. Um, a recovery is not in the offing because things have changed fundamentally. I can tell what you. What do you mean it's not in the offing? We're all hoping we are hanging on to the recovery. A recovery says we're going to sort of lift off from where we were. And that's not the case. I mean, if you think you're a property business, I don't see why many people are going to go back to the office. Most people will look for smaller spaces, right? Um, because they will have their employees working from home. So basically, if you were, you know, floor space is going to be uh, quite abundant. So if you had your business in renting out space, that business is probably not going to do very well. So you might need to tweak it a little bit and offer a little bit more. So, and that speaks not from the numbers now. So if you think about a recovery, that would be moving maybe from a 45% occupancy to a 70% occupancy. Now we are thinking, you stay at that occupancy and find other things to do with the rest of the space. That's what I mean by we are not actually going back into a recovery where we think our numbers are going to grow from that base, but they're actually going to come from new areas. I think you can think about this in IT, in, uh, in, um, in agriculture, in all sorts of industries, that things are going to look quite slightly different. And the offers that people, you know, depending on what people are coding. I mean, in this Zoom online discussion, yeah. I've been surprised there's no local there's no local platform on which to do yeah. this. And um, I found that very, very interesting. <laughs> Let's leave it there, my good sir. I guess it brings testimony to the whole point about this being a new normal. So um, I certainly look forward to catching up with you some more, but thanks for those insights and we'll stay in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Tante.